if we moved in real life with tank controls, camera angles and all, that would be a nightmare. 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 Why so ugly? Sure, but, uh, you know, can we get back to what I was actually talking about? Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, I just, just thought about it. It's, that'd be brutal, brutal. Yes, it would, but look, anyway, for next month I was I was thinking of something that we could do, you know. Uh, I forgot the bones of the idea, but uh, I want you to kind of pitch in some ideas so we can make one big collaborative effort, you know, hopefully include Kylo later on, but... I was just thinking of stuff like this, like, uh, what if, instead of just the game, we also did a parade? I'm back at the backpack log, been gone for way too long. I'm back at the backpack log, got so many games to play, dog. I'm back at the backpack log, Donkey Kong explains my dog. I'm back at the What is up guys, it is Robert at Gaming with me and welcome to Back at the Backlog, a series that we take a look at the games that I recently beat off my backlog. Today's episode is on the game Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Last season we played the Resident Evil on Rail spin-off, The Umbrella Chronicles, which I did not like at all. Which is even more unfortunate because I thought the Dark Side Chronicles was great. Today we check out the first mainline game we are tackling, aka Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. This is pretty much a first movie where I actually played the 2020 remake of the game before the original, which I really enjoyed by the way. However, considering how drastic of a difference the two are, I saw no reason why I wouldn't play the original one day and, well, that one day did indeed happen. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis was released on November 11th, 1999 in the US. It was developed and published by Capcom. As you can see, I played the GameCube version of this game because it's the same game but with the solid visual upgrade, so I decided to go with this version. So how was my first experience with a classic style Resident Evil game? Well, here we are 25 years after its original release. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the story first. We first see a cutscene of Raccoon City being overrun by zombies due to the outbreak of the T-Virus, the biological weapon created by Umbrella Corporation. Pure chaos and all hope for the city is gone. We then see the side of a building blow up with our character, former Stars member Jill Valentine getting flown out, and the game begins. Yup. Quick cutscenes showing that shit is going down, and then you are immediately thrown into the action. It's an awesome intro that puts you on the edge instantly as the game throws multiple zombies at you right away. Right off the bat, this game visually is pretty damn good. With it being a PlayStation 1 game, the character models don't exactly look real, but the enhancements on GameCube make everything shine a bit more. I really like the environments. This might be the first game that I played that has the whole 2D rendered backgrounds, and man, it makes this game look clean as hell to me. This isn't something that could have been achieved with a fully 3D world. Instead, they took advantage of the hardware limitations and made something timeless and iconic with it. The only 3D models are the characters and interactable objects. It's a great decision and one that they made with the series for quite a while. Yes, you can tell this is originally a PlayStation 1 game enhanced on GameCube, but it's regardless a really good looking game. Right as the game started, once I started to move, I was like, oh shit, this is going to be tough. Just look at how I can't even walk straight. And yes, the first zombies I encountered, I did indeed die. Oh fuck, this was gonna be tough. Why is that? Well, this game's controls are in the style of what they call tank controls. Tank controls just aren't really used essentially at all in modern gaming, and as someone who never played a game with tank controls, this genuinely might be the toughest control scheme I ever had to learn in my gaming history. I feel I can adapt pretty well to different controls quite quickly, but wow, not this game. You see, tank controls, well, move like an old tank. You move forward moving the analog stick up and backward by moving it backwards. But to turn, your character literally turns left or right in a circle and once you're facing the way you want to go, then you move forward again. 
It may not sound like a big deal, but it's also in combination with fixed camera angles that change where your character is facing. Moving forward is still moving forward, but my brain adjusted to trying to move in a different direction. For this reason, it what seems like how I hold the analog stick or something, I'd constantly be hugging the walls or very slowly trying to maneuver around zombies and fail as they would be faster than me adjusting to my own movements. Luckily, when it comes to shooting your weapons, it's a lot more simpler as aiming is automatic. As long as you are pointing in the vicinity of an enemy, it'll hit. Then there's also a very helpful dodge button that is tough at first, but I got semi-consistent at it by the end. However, I never mastered the movement. I definitely got competent at it, but when it came to being under pressure with big boss battles, I couldn't move around for the life of me. It was a struggle to get better at these controls. I mean, I was not good at this game at all. I started playing this game on hard difficulty as there were only two options, easy or hard. Wait, what happened to normal? Well, according to a bunch of people on forums and shit, hard is like the traditional normal. I disagree. Maybe it's traditional if you traditionally play this game every year, but this game is fucking brutal on hard. You start off with just a pistol and man, I literally had to redo the first like 40 minutes multiple times. That's some large portions I was redoing. The average time to beat the game is 7 hours, which took me more than double that, and here I was spending 3 something hours in the opening area of the game. So yeah, I bumped it down to easy. I'm having a tough time with the controls, I'm given very little weapons, and oh yeah, a limited amount of saves. You can only save with ink ribbons that you collect throughout the game, and it also is an item that takes a slot in your very limited inventory. Yeah, I didn't like that especially when I made some decent progress on hard where I made it to the police station, only to find the closest typewriter to save didn't have an item box where I stored my ink ribbon. And yes, I died in the very next room, starting me at the very beginning. That was very frustrating, and luckily Easy hands you more weapons at the start and lets you save an unlimited amount of times, which is awesome because I don't want the game telling me when it's okay to turn off my GameCube. Like bro, I'm trying to go to sleep. My eyes are drooping, I'm getting all tired, and, and the game's like... No, find an ink ribbon I used one of your last ones, but don't come crying to me next time when you want to sleep again. Sleep. <laughs> I think you can tell I don't really like limited saves in games. You know, I get why other people may like the idea of it, but not for me. While I may be called easy, if this is your first time playing a classic Resident Evil game, it still isn't easy. If anything, this is more normal for like modern Resident Evil standards. And man, being able to actually play the game is a lot of fun. I actually finished this game on hard without even dying once. Are you serious? I mean, I know it's technically possible, but that, that's like crazy tough. Absolutely, you just gotta get good. I was gonna compliment you, but now I hate you. And I don't even believe you. We find out that Raccoon City will be blown up to further prevent the spread of the T-Virus, which makes stakes of escaping a lot higher. Raccoon City is a really well-designed area. I love the rundown look and the overall atmosphere is great from hearing the zombie just off screen, getting you prepared to attack. You'll enter restaurants, the police station, and parking lots all affected by the chaos of people trying to survive. You encounter three survivors, Carlos, Mikhail, and Nikolai from UBCS, a private military owned by Umbrella in Raccoon City, and team up with them to escape. Interesting enough, there are different cutscenes you'll see depending on where you may go first in your playthrough. It won't be anything major, but it does offer some replayability for people who like to see where they may end up if they choose another option. It's pretty damn cool, and definitely made me think about some of the choices along the way. I quite liked the cutscenes overall, I thought there was some solid voice acting for a lot of the characters, and it was just entertaining seeing the few survivors interacting with each other. As for surviving this world, you'll have a small inventory to carry around ammo and guns, but also herbs and first aid sprays to heal, add in some essential puzzle items and you'll be storing a decent amount of items in your item box just in case. There's the occasional time I end up having to run back and forth to retrieve several items, but I learned that if you get an item, you likely have to use it sooner rather than later, so I just kept it until the game states I don't need it anymore and I just discard it. It was very cool when you'd be holding on to an item for quite a while and finally finding out what you use it for. Having to run back and forth also isn't that big of a deal if it isn't too long of a distance between areas because for the most part, enemies don't respawn, which is awesome and feels like actual progress. It really could have been annoying and pointless to take out zombies if they constantly respawn, so it was definitely a smart decision, especially since you have limited ammo. While Easy does give you a large amount of ammo, especially for your handgun, it was always the more powerful weapons I tried not to use and save until the latter half of the game. 
Handguns take a while to kill a zombies, using up what seems like 7 to 10 shots, while a shotgun can take out groups in only 1 to 2 bullets. So those more powerful weapons were so helpful and I really tried to use them only for bigger enemies. This is because you'll encounter a variety of creatures, not just zombies. You got fast zombie dogs that attack in packs, those huge parasites that'll suck your life away, and of course, the star of the show, the man whose name is in the title, Nemesis. You get introduced to Nemesis early on right before entering the police station in a cutscene where he absolutely annihilates someone. It's one hell of an introduction to this beast that is constantly saying, STARS. He is fast and tough to take on and he will pop up multiple times throughout the journey. You can actually take him down several times but there's only a few times where it's a genuine boss fight against him. Other than those times you can run from him and get to safety and that is exactly what I did. Look, it's not easy to consistently dodge and run around him, especially as I was not great with the tank controls, so yeah, I escaped him any time I could. But man, it is nerve wracking when he is around as he's super aggressive with him constantly cornering you, and once you are trapped, it is definitely game over for you. He is great though, as he ups the intensity to a 10 any time he's on screen. You know, I feel ripped off that I couldn't play as Nemesis. What? Why? You said it yourself, his name is on the title, he's on the cover, you'd think you'd play as him. I never expected to play as the monster, but you know what? I mean, I agree. I think they need more games like that, for sure. Although, you know, it's funny. If you actually emulate this game on PC, there's actually a mod where you can play as Nemesis from his perspective, and you have to take out Jill, which is very cool. See, we need some official game like that. Raccoon City isn't the only place you'll be exploring. Once you escape that area, you end up at this clock tower, which was a pretty cool area with puzzles that I admittedly didn't quite get but got around by just testing out different combinations. This is a smaller section that ends with a battle with Nemesis, which I had some problems with as it was a mandatory fight with this behemoth. Due to the controls, I kept dying, but did eventually take him out after some pretty damn good dodges. You can see that I was very much getting the handle of the controls by then. Unfortunately, this is also where it stuck out to me how annoying it is that the game would send me back to the main menu when you die. A lot of older games did this and this game was one of them. Instead of just restarting at a save point or giving the option of restarting the nemesis fight, you gotta load up your save again and when you do this multiple times in a row, it starts to really frustrate you. Another area you explore is the hospital, which is very cool enough you actually play as Carlos for a change. Carlos has his own entirely different inventory, mostly stocked up with assault rifle ammo, which was a nice change of pace as I didn't really use mine as Jill. There's some new creatures you'll encounter in the hospital and some bigger story moments are revealed too. This whole second half of the game really changes the environments you explore, which is nice as while Raccoon City was awesome, a variety of well-designed locations is even better. In all these areas, there's a ton of things to click on and read, a ton of notes from people who used to live there or die there with interesting and dark backstories on the world around you. It's all really cool to read and I really appreciated the details that they added to the backstory of this world. This is also the time I started using any super powerful weapons as I was nearing the end areas of the game. It was pretty stockpiled with good stuff. Speaking of the end, I'm now going to talk about the final few stuff of the game just to let you know. We end up in this final area, the Dead Factory, an abandoned factory overrun by the undead. This place has a super eerie atmosphere with a rusty look and quiet surroundings. You'll encounter almost every type of enemy here considering it's the last stop. As you get deeper into the dead factory, Nikolai starts a gunfight with Jill as it turns out he's actually there to gather data on the team's combat against Umbrella's bioweapons. He tells Jill that he's to be the only one that survives out of the group so he'll be the only one to live and tell the story which will earn him more money. This includes there being a bonus for killing Jill. However, this is short lived as Nikolai is heard getting crunched by none other than Nemesis. Jill goes through the next door to escape when a countdown appears. There's four minutes to get out of this room as it's essentially a trash compactor throwing out the waste in what seems like acid, but of course, you hear STARS. Yes, Nemesis is here for a final time, all jacked up looking with tentacles for arms. This shit was intense and also can be bull as it can be tough to dodge Nemesis as he grabs Jill and throws her and she takes forever to get the hell up. The idea is there are these switches on the wall that burn acid on him to perhaps stun him or maybe truly damage him. Honestly, I don't know because the best thing to do is to just mow the motherfucker down. It would have been a lot easier if I just done that from attempt one with enough shots and a ton of times getting tossed around. Finally, one of these shots took out Nemesis. Jill escapes and Nemesis is gone, destroyed finally after so many encounters. 
A warning is told that a missile is coming this way and it is officially down to the wire for Jill. A helicopter is coming to save her as you make your way through the final rooms, final mobs of zombies. You finally reach a room where you must start up three generators to get power going to escape. You activate the first one and all of a sudden some deformed thing comes crashing down and it mutates into this giant monstrous creature. This is indeed Nemesis. The final fucked up mutated form of Nemesis. Now this is the true final battle. While this massive huge form of Nemesis corners the hell out of you with essentially no wiggle room, you have to power the other two generators. After getting slapped around and healing up, I pushed the final generator. I wasn't exactly sure what I was shooting for as the door wasn't open, so I was shooting at Nemesis hoping something would happen when the charge up was actually for this crazy powerful weapon in the middle that shot through the entire middle. Then it counted down one last time and did indeed defeat Nemesis for one last actual time. With literally no more health items in stock, I ran to the door and man, this motherfucker doesn't quit. All that is left is this one organ of him and you are given the choice to exterminate the monster or ignore it and evacuate. I honestly wasn't sure what would happen if I stayed there so I said screw it and evacuated. I mean this whole city is going to blow up in the next couple of minutes anyway. And if Nemesis survives that, then he'll survive anything anyway. Carlos is outside with the helicopter and they finally actually fly out to safety. The missile flies past them and hits Raccoon City destroying literally everything. All the places you've been to are wiped from existence. There's a somber news report about the Raccoon City tragedy and how the death toll is over 100,000. And with that news report done, the credits roll. God damn, what an ending. That was an epic, intense ending. Cool ass boss battle which was less about combat and more about just trying to survive with an incredibly cool and uniquely designed enemy and the scale is impressive especially for the PlayStation 1. Then to wrap it up with Raccoon City getting destroyed in this more somber ending, ah, so damn cool. After beating the game you even unlock the mercenaries mode which is an action packed mode where you play as Carlos, Mikhail or Nikolai trying to get to a specific part of the city, shooting everything you see which racks up money that you could put towards cool unlockables like unlimited ammo for weapons that you can use in the main game. It's definitely a cool side mode that I could see being very addicting for people. That was Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. What a really great game. It may have taken essentially more than half the game to get decent at the tank controls, but once I got over that hurdle was a great survival horror game filled with well designed locations, fun variety of weapons, and intense moments with the super memorable Nemesis. I love the concept of escaping the city and it creates the perfect set pieces to get to that ending. Overall I'm going to give Resident Evil 3 Nemesis a STARS out of 10. I just realized something guys. I played a completely different game. Jesus, dude, what is with you confusing the Resident Evil games? I don't know, man. I also played Resident Evil 7, Biohazard. Resident Evil 7 isn't even on the backlog, man. Where the hell did you get that from? My bad. Look, it won't happen again. I bet you $100 it does. Alright, deal. Easy money for me. Anyway, what a really great game. Definitely looking forward to playing the next Resident Evil game. Which will be the next one? Who knows, only time will tell, but I am curious to see how it stacks up with this one. That'll be for today though, thank you so much for watching. Have you played Resident Evil 3 Nemesis? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know down in the comments below, and I'll see you all next time. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis was a horrifyingly great time, but it is officially out of the backlog.
gonna go get some cereal, guys. I'm in Phoenix or something, right? So I'll uh, I'll leave you two. I'll leave you. I'll leave you two with what? What? what what's happening? What is this? What is this? What? What is this? What? I don't get it. Why am I? Why am I walking like this? What you're walking like? I don't know. Normal? No, this is. This is odd. This is. This is. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is tank controls. This is this is real life tank controls. The camera just you saw that guys? Sorry, bro. I saw nothing. The cam the camera just changed. You didn't see that. You didn't see that? Right then and there? Look at this. If I if I walk up Oh god. Oh my god. What is happening? What is this? What is this? What is this? Man, just get your damn cereal. Okay, okay. I'm... I'm not going crazy. I'm not going crazy. I'm not going crazy. This is just... Oh! This is just... Okay. Right? Hold on, that's a wall. Alright, alright, I'm getting... I'm getting the hang of this. I'm getting the hang of this. It's a wall. That's still the wall. That is literally still the wall. What is wrong with me? Come on. Jesus Christ. Okay. Really? Jesus Christ. Lower. Lower. Jeez. Okay. Okay. See? I'm getting the hangers. This is forward, forward, please. Camera angle shift right there. Really? That's perfect. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> oh. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Nope. Really. Nice. You know what? It's fine. It's fine. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Let's just eat our cereal. Let's just eat it. Let's just eat our cereal. Just cereal. Alright, we're doing really good now. This is this is solid. Okay. 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 We're good. I'm very much ready. Get these goddamn things. Come on. Let's go straight. <laughs> I'm not even gonna move. This. This is a nightmare. A nightmare! 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 <sighs> well, look who decided to wake up. You find me that goddamn boring. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just had a long night. I don't find it boring. I just... Okay, I, I find it a little bit boring, but, but you know, look, I, I just had a dream where, <laughs> no joke, 
my movement was tank controls. Remember how I was saying, like, how bad that would be? Yeah, and? Yeah, well, that shit was a nightmare. 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 What's nightmare. with the echo? We gotta fix that. <sighs> I'm not gonna waste any more time. Let's just, let's just play the next game. Yeah, baby, start up a new franchise. <laughs> I know you're excited, dude.